Hi. OK, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about 3.js. Oh, I'm Dominic, by the way. And today, um, yeah, so the objective of this talk is to introduce this really wonderful and rich framework and to entice you guys to use this framework for you know, your uh, websites and to entice you to do 3D animations in those websites and in your projects. So let's begin. Uh, but you know, before that, uh, initially, I really wanted to talk about augmented reality. Problem is, you know, I, I just don't have the funds to give you guys Google Cardboards. <laughs> so yeah, it's really hard to set up. And uh, yeah, I feel like I was way over my head uh, if I'm going to discuss an AR framework. So I dug a little bit deeper, and I noticed that some augmented reality frameworks that specifically use JavaScript have this as their library, 3.js. And I got curious. You know, I asked myself, huh, why is, why is everybody using um, 3.js? So, and I liked what I found, and yeah, decided to do a tech talk on it. So let's begin. What is 3.js? Pretty simple. It's a JavaScript API library that just renders and creates interactive 2D and 3D graphics. Simple, right? So yeah, all that Tupla just you know, reduced to this statement, which is great. But before we actually talk about 3.js, we have to talk about WebGL. So what is WebGL? Um, WebGL is it's just the 3D API of the web. It's just the standard 3D graphics API for the web. Um, it was developed by Vladimir Vukicevich at Mozilla in 2006. I think it is now maintained by the Kronos Group. And if you're going to take anything away from this tech talk about WebGL, it's this. Runs on the GPU on your computer. This was a game changer when this was released. And why? Because back then, developers had to rely on plugins or native applications to give users a 3D experience. And on top of that, they had to ask users to download custom software. And as developers, we all know that we don't want the users to do anything. They, we just want them to browse and you know, appreciate the websites that we've built. <laughs> Basically, that's it. So OK. Um, yes, so WebGL gave us web pages access to dynamic shading and realistic physics. And it's already in most of our browsers, in our modern browsers, even though it's not an official HTML5 specification. And WebGL is really centered around these two functions, vertex and fragment shader written in this shading language, GLSL. So I mean, uh, probably you're going to be asking yourselves, oh, OK, wow, WebGL is just two functions. Wow, that's easy. No, it's not. So <laughs> why not just use WebGL? Because it's complicated. It really uses a lot of math in its framework. And there's really no need to reinvent the wheel because we have all these libraries available for us that are built on top of WebGL. And yeah, did I say complicated? So um, when you're attempting to look into this framework, it, you would need to know a lot of mathematical concepts. Uh, examples would be matrix math, normalized coordinates, first terms, cross products. If you already f gave up uh, when I just started mentioning matrix math, I did too. So it's like, yeah, there's really no way I'm going to start off with WebGL. So again, I mentioned earlier that I really wanted to talk about augmented reality. And these are just some of the frameworks that are where 3.js is used. So these are frameworks that use JavaScript. And this is a library that they use, 3.js, which is Argon, ARJS, JS, AR Toolkit, which is just, I think, an extension of um, AR Toolkit, and JS Eruco. OK. And, but 3.js is also not just the only player in the game. Uh, there are other frameworks and engines that exist. Um, we have Babylon, A-Frame for VR, Play Canvas. And if you guys love playing video games, you might have heard Unity 5 and Unreal Engine. So these, these two specifically are more focused on gaming development. So why are we focusing on 3.js? There's so many libraries out there. Um, First and foremost, like any other library, it provides an abstraction for WebGL projects. It, you know, it helps you not think about the mathy stuff and just focuses, on, lets you focus on what your project needs, which are 3D elements or objects. It's very flexible. 
And it's very popular. And since it's very popular, there's a large community for it. There's an ecosystem. And last but not the least, very important, especially for us burgeoning developers, great documentation. Like if, it's very easy to just look at their featured projects and to look at a specific topic. And it, it would really just guide you through, you know, through every step of the way, which is perfect. So OK, we'll do a short demo. Not really a live demo, but just to show you what you can achieve even with just the get starting documentation. So we're not going to do any live coding for you know, lack of time and uh, just to make sure I don't mess this up. Um, so let me just describe what I have here. So first of all, you have to create your canvas. It's just a basic HTML document with <coughs> just this canvas here and um, with these scripts. This 3.js, you can just think of this as like, let's say the bootstrap or um, your NPM install, which by the way is available for 3.js. You can, if, since we're all using Node here, you can just NPM install <coughs> Node. And this is where we're gonna put our code, the meat of how we're going to render an object using 3.js. So okay, we're going to render a cube. So let's go to our code. And as its name implies, you only need three things with 3.js. You need a scene, you need a camera, and a renderer. So I already have things commented out here to guide us through how this process works. So first of all, uh, yes, we just defined the scene through three. We defined our camera. In this camera, we have a lot of uh, cameras available in 3.js. Uh, for this specific demo, we're just going to be using perspective camera, and it takes four arguments, field of view, aspect ratio, and the clipping planes, these two. Uh, you can think of clipping planes as uh, like the foreground and the background. So you have this object, and there are objects being rendered near, near like that, that canvas, and there are objects being rendered like behind, like let's say your main, like your main object and whatnot. And this is just a range. Everything, all the objects that are rendered above this far clipping range, this far clipping range, will not be rendered. And everything that's less than this near clipping range won't be rendered. Okay? So now let's go through our renderer. You just create a renderer and you just set the size. And now since we're creating a cube, Let's just go do it. Again, you're just defining stuff, which is great. Uh, we want things simple. So you're just defining this box geometry that accepts these three vertices. A material, so you can't have a cube, but you have all these vertices, but how will you see it? So you need the material. So it's just a basic material that, and for this demo, it's just going to be the color green. And you have to mesh these two together to form this cube, which just takes in geometry and material. Very simple. And now, to tie it all together, you need this render loop to render it in your canvas. So just to make things interesting, uh, our cube is going to rotate. So you just have that cube dot rotation x and y. And it's just going to rotate for like 0 0.01. And you're just rendering the scene in camera and animating. So let's see what, what the result is. Oh. Index of HTML. Great, so this is it. it. It's really nice. So as you can see here in our, our code.js, it really didn't take a lot for you to create this 3D image. You just had to define your scene, your camera, and your renderer. So if we're going back to the presentation, OK. Slideshow, current slide. OK. So. You only need three things, your camera, scene, and renderer. And with these three ingredients, you can make 3D, 3D images. It's great. So uh, final words, um, yes, I really hope that you guys uh, can utilize this framework because it's really great. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with um, 3.js, uh, especially if you're uh, dealing with 3D objects and animations and you want to enrich your website. Uh, this could also be your gateway drug to 3D web design and game development. But I mean, again, for game development, I also encourage you to look at Unity and Unreal because they're really geared for, for that specific use for, game, for gaming development. It's very versatile because uh, 3.js was made in such a way that it should encompass like, uh, like 
lots, lots of things. It's really just, you know, for web graphics. And again, yeah, you just need three things. Just your scene, your camera, and your renderer. Um, so let me just, again, just show you the documentation and you guys can explore this on your own. Uh, yes, so they, they provide all these, um, yeah, featured projects using 3.js. And yeah, feel free to browse around. And again, documentation's great. Uh, everything's just set up really quickly. The, the demo I showed you is basically in their front page. And yeah, there, there are lots of topics on animation, audio, cameras. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you, so, thank you very much.